Hello everyone and welcome to episode 162 of Let's Plant. Before we begin, huge thanks to the interest that we got in the previous video. There has been lots of comments and questions about it and a lot of the questions I've been getting lately are sort of related and it has to do mainly about dormancy in succulent plants. You've probably seen this dormancy table being passed around and you may have at least once questioned whether it is accurate or not. In this episode, allow me to guide you through it. When talking about dormancy, you'll often hear the phrases summer dormant or winter dormant and you might even go as far as, as extrapolate it as being summer growers and winter growers because you know the inverse of growing is dormant. That line of thinking makes sense or does it? Alright, so let's dissect things in a typical Sariska Page fashion. The thing about summer and winter is that these terms are very subjective in nature. The winter I experience here in Melbourne, Australia is so different from the winter that you would otherwise experience in, say, in the UK. My friend Alex from the UK likes to poke fun at me whenever I complain about the cold. In the previous video, I mentioned that it was 10 degrees outside and I was wearing a jacket. And Alex said that 10 degrees is just another nice day over at the UK. Right now, I'm here twiddling my thumbs waiting for their summer. That way, I could tease him about the heat because down here, we are used to the 40 to 50 degrees. It's nothing to us. Well, it's something, but we're already used to it. So let's just get it out. Point number one, not all summers and winters are equal. Which brings me to point number two, when does summer and winter start? I've already covered this in one of my previous videos, so let me just go over this quickly. There are two main systems with defining the climates. The first system is called the astronomical seasons, and as the name suggests, astronomy, it is based on the position of the Earth around the Sun, and that mainly has to do with when the equinoxes or equal nights and the solstices happen. Under the astronomical system, in the Northern Hemisphere, summer starts on the 20th of June which means down here in the southern hemisphere, that would be the start of winter. The other system is called the meteorological system and it is based on calendar months. Under that system, summer starts on the 1st of June in the northern hemisphere, which means on our end, winter starts on the 1st of June. So as you can see right there, when someone says winter or summer, are we really talking about the same winter and summer? Now, when dealing with dormancy, I think it is more accurate if we go by temperature ranges. Now, in the US, they have this system called the hardiness zones. And these zones basically describe the lowest temperature on average year on year that your area would be getting. Now, here in Melbourne, Australia, at least on my side of Melbourne, the western side, we, are, we roughly have the equivalent of zone 10A, which means that our lowest temperatures is about negative 1 to 2 degrees Celsius or about 30 to 35 Fahrenheit. And if you look it up on the US hardiness maps, then you would see that 10A is roughly California and a lot of the southerly states of the US. With that said, I think we're ready to move on to the next point, which is the sort of temperature range that your plants like best. Let's call this their growing temperature range. If you look at the dormancy chart, Echeveria are listed under winter dormant, which might make you think that they are active during summer. It only makes sense, right? It is true to some extent, but whose summer are we talking about? From experience, I find that Echeveria generally like 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, and that's about 68 to 86 Fahrenheit, if I remember correctly. I looked it up just now. But do note that this is just an estimate on my part. The actual range might be higher or lower depending on the plant. But yeah, I think that's generally the range where I find my Echeveria to be growing the fastest that they could ever grow. I find that if it gets consistently below 20 degrees, then the amount of green that I would see on my Echeverias tend to lessen and they start to adopt more of their stress colors, which tells me that they are starting to go out of their comfortable range showing their stress and if you've been monitoring them closely then you'll find that their growth rate seems to have slowed down compared to back during the warmer months 
in many climates below 20 degrees is considered cold so hey the label is correct winter dormant summer growers nothing wrong there but what many people forget is that the inverse is also true if the temperature is consistently above 30 degrees more like 35 and above then the plants the echeveras they tend to go dormant they close up they get stressed as well i'm sure you've noticed this during your summer especially those of you in zones where summers can be quite hot it's not uncommon to see them turn into their stress colors during summer but why don't we call them summer dormant as well so here's the thing echeverias become stressed when they are outside their growing temperature range if you think about it it's just the same as us humans in our case we cope by having heating or cooling units or just you know putting on more clothes or removing clothes depending on how hot or cold it is another classic example is the aeonio they are well known to be summer dormant which means that you could infer that they are winter growers which for the most part it is true as you can see here they clearly like the colder temperatures compared to the warmer temperatures during the warmer months they tend to close up very tightly and they look really sad but during the colder months they open up they turn mostly green this ones used to be very dark purple but now they're green and this shows that they are actively growing so to me it means that their growing temperature range is simply lower than that of the echeveria from experience i find that aeoniums like it at the range of 5 to 25 degrees beyond that they would close up tight and below that they would freeze and die placing them in an absolute summer or winter table makes things overly simplified it makes sense from a macro perspective but once you go down to details and deal with different types of climates then that's where things start to crumble down so what i'm saying is take the dormancy chart with a grain of salt rather than thinking that plants are only active during a certain season i think that takeaway here should be that some plants like it colder or warmer than other plants the best approach here i think is using the dormancy table as base then monitor your plants throughout the year and see if it coincides with the list if they don't then just make sure to take note of the temperature range that you see your plants start getting dormant or maybe they start growing and check it again year on year just to see if it is consistent or if it was just something that happened this year again do not deal with the absolutes of that table unless you're a Sith <laughs> and that's it for this episode subscribe if you would like to see more content like this it has been raining for the past few days so I'm not able to do any landscaping videos maybe next time so right now I'm just spending a lot of my free time on other projects now speaking of side projects i am working on this covid19 tracker which i've shown you in the last episode you can find it at coronavirus.makeitsimpler.com.au it's still in beta but there's already a lot of features that i've included i'm done with the charts comparison mode for the daily breakdown tables and government policies and i'm currently working on the map view and i'm hoping to get the map view done this weekend then i'll focus my attention on getting the mobile layout working because a lot of the viewers are viewing things from mobile it's a work in progress but enough of that i'll see you in the next episode for more plant talk i'll see you then bye